Ready, go! Hey guys, uh, a little bit of a different video today. Um, something that I haven't done before on the Pound for Pound arm wrestling channel. And it's uh, gonna be a little bit different. I don't know. If you've been around, you've known the journey of what I've been doing with Pound for Pound arm wrestling, uh, it'll make a little bit more sense. But if you're new to the channel, you might be like, mm, this is interesting. But um, I met with a good mate of mine, Sharu, uh, the other day. And um, the reason I met with him was he, he asked to pick my brain about how kind of I've achieved everything I have in the social media sense um, with Pound for Pound arm wrestling. Um, because this guy, Sharu, is an amazingly talented dancer. Um, he is literally uh, one of the best robot dancers um, globally and has, has been on Australia. He's got talent, did really well with a group called Swagger Mama a few years ago. Um, but anyway, this guy's amazing, but he hasn't yet cracked the code of being able to build a social media brand. So, um, so he hit me up and... I was happy to share. I mean, sharing is is an amazing thing. It's a it's a real privilege to be able to give back to people that are on a similar path where they have as much passion about whatever their thing is. Um, it's the same as arm wrestling. I love teaching hungry arm wrestlers how to arm wrestle better. Uh, people who are aspiring to be pro, I love guiding them. So. What you're about to see is a bit of a video where he and I sat, sit down and I kind of go through some of the principles and share with him uh, some of the concepts that have really made a big difference in bringing pound for pound arm wrestling to the level it's at now, and uh, which is it being a career. Um, so this is, we'll do this kind of in place of what I would normally have, where I'd normally have my plug episode. Um, we'll do this, but anyway, I'm rambling on and you probably want to just see the video now. So. Um, and if you're wondering what's with the old balloons behind me, they're left over from Bradley's sixth birthday, um, the vanilla gorilla, as you all know. All right, guys. Yeah. And it just stuffs up. Yeah. Man. Yeah, autofocus horrible. But things like this, yeah. manual focus has to be it. Because yeah. Especially when you've got the aperture set so it's like nice and creamy yeah. in the background. Yeah, yeah. And that thing murders you if it decides yeah. to focus on this or this That's or right. something like that. Yeah. No, just so what are you guys? What are you guys doing with the robot? What's the plan? So uh, obviously, I tried the daily banana thing for a while. Yeah. I was like, hey, it's. I mean, it's easy, but at the same time, it's not. It's not, it's not what, what you I do. enjoy. It's not you what are. I do. Yeah, yeah, nah. yeah. So yeah. I was like, I've had robots on my. I've constantly had it on my mind since we did the first thing in 2010. I've just been thinking about the right way to get it out there. Yeah. And like you got Chad and you got a few others who they're, now they're have kicking goals with it, yeah. Yeah, who yeah. Insta, Facebook, YouTube, killing it. Are you on TikTok yet? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That'll be the next Instagram, I reckon. Yeah, it's getting bigger, eh? Yeah. And like, you just just the, the numbers on there, and they're all the average age is like 15 years old, which is perfect. For which is yeah. yeah, and that's that's where Insta was, like I don't know, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Until it blew up. Yeah. Now it's. Now it's probably the hottest out of all of them. Yeah. Um, Facebook's average age is like 40 now. Yeah. So everyone, all the young people are getting off that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, they're all moving to Insta. Right. I'm on, I, try, I try to be on everything, but um, I guess, like, like I, I think you, you nailed the first and most critical thing when you talk about the Daily Banana and, and how it wasn't you. Yeah. It was kind of an experiment in, in thought, I guess, but yeah. yeah, it was very much, that's that's like the first and most critical ingredient is that, yeah. is that genuine enjoyment and yeah so you know what you enjoy which is good yeah um, the formula that I've been working with that has just been has really 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 taken off is like creating essentially a, a, a flow down from your long form content yeah um, uh, cap here yes please yeah. thank you how did Legend. you know thank you so much <laughs> I don't know really how did you know because you always get a latte here I don't know I just assumed <laughs> I don't know thank you <laughs> um yeah, creating long form content is the is it just like feeds everything you do because yeah. the the first the first thing and I think we've talked about it before is to realize that every social media platform has its context. Yeah. And also that you're not relying on anyone given a platform. You're relying on your brand being yeah. you, the robots. Yeah. You you guys are the brand and it doesn't matter if Instagram blows up next week. Exactly. 
exactly. your brand will still exist and you just need to be able to roll with whatever yeah. platform is the distribution network. Totally. And so you need to learn to give the appropriate uh, content to the appropriate platform. platform. Yeah. And um, so that is that is like, in terms of a production, like there's, there's creation, which is just, you guys, you guys are easy with creation because you've got a lot of talent. You stand out. You've got a lot of people. Um, where, make it super easy. Yeah, so distribution is the is the thing that you guys are new to on nailing. So you, yes. you, you're nailing talent, you need to nail distribution and those two things done with consistency result in yeah. happy days mm -hmm. <laughs> and a bit of patience. That's well. the goal. But um, so the, the formula generally, like I guess before we talk about the formula of where to distribute, is to think about what the context of each of those things are. So for me, YouTube is where I put my long form content, but I also I also put it into, for me, I go into audio as well, so podcasts. I don't know if anything you do is gonna be suitable for just audio, it maybe. It might be in the future, maybe. maybe. So just keep it in your mind that if you ever create a piece of long form content, yeah. grab the, that that is audio worthy, grab the audio and make a podcast out of it as well because yeah. that is a distribution channel that is like mega upside, yeah. mega upside. I think it'd be possible, like imagine with the robots thing, plus you got robots around the world. Like I'm thinking to grow it into a community of like, if you're a robot from around the world, send us your content, we'll feature it. Yeah. But eventually you get like, people have favorites. Mm. You can almost create like a Marvel universe, like an MCU <laughs> yeah. of robots from around the world. And it's yeah. like if somebody new comes in and gains traction on the Insta, which is like the behind the scenes, the real person, yeah. this person's getting traction, let's make long form content with you, with, with the main cast. Yeah. And bring yeah, them in. Like and get, so you could do podcasts with so things you, like that. So you, you're creatively you thinking already, and, and it's, that's exactly right. So mm. you, current, the current climate is, is um, you've got YouTube, yeah. and you've got podcasting <laughs> as the two best long form. Yeah starting points now the context of youtube i see youtube as like a like to relate it to oh, real world kind of before the internet times youtube was like a library people know what they want when they go to a library yeah they go, it's changed the recommended they, stuff, they, right? they're going there and they're watching stuff that they know they're already interested in or yeah they're getting recommended from youtube yeah they're watching how to's people are prepared to watch an hour on yeah. youtube no worries yeah it's um long form high quality, targeted interest content. Yeah. So here's where you put your longest and your most, your original piece of content largely unedited. And when I say unedited, it's got everything in it. It's, you still edit the, 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 the fat off the sides of it, but yeah. you have really, really long form stuff there and it's okay for it to be 45 minutes long. Yeah. Um, no worries at all. Sure. Same thing, whatever you do it there, if you can put it in the podcast, same thing. Now, the structure of podcast and the structure of YouTube are two other topics that we can get into. But, um, so that's the library. And then underneath it, you got Facebook. Now, I know you mentioned before uh, when you're getting off Facebook and everyone, everyone kind of is. It's still, you still got to be on it because it's yeah. still number one in terms of just sheer volume. Yeah. Facebook is like, let's use an American term, it's like your Walmart. You can yeah. literally do everything and get everything and yeah. try everything and it's everything. Yeah. It is your widest and your most diverse distribution network. It's got a great ability to have ads. Um, it's got great reach. Ads and everything. Yeah. Yeah, good reach, still very cheap ads. Um, I really do still get the most bang for my buck out of Facebook, to yeah. be honest. Um, where Instagram. Instagram's like a nightclub. Everyone looks good in there. Yeah. Not a lot of conversations yeah. going on. Just kind of bumping into people. Hey, hey, yeah. hey. Um, and but it's where the popular people are hanging out. So yeah. you got to be popular. It's, it's, it's kind of where Twitter was <laughs> seven or eight years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. It used to be everyone would follow Twitter, but you didn't really have the, that sort of same sort of thing. Now it's all Insta. Yeah, Instagram is the place to be right now, without a doubt. Twitter, yeah. Twitter to me is like. Um, it's like a, it's, it's like, I, would, I, I don't think it's dying because it's it's based on such a simple, simple formula of just, just text and short based yeah, yeah. text. And it's it's got the market share in that and it probably won't ever lose it, not for the foreseeable future anyway, but Twitter, to be relevant on Twitter, Twitter you've got to be kind of rich and famous. Like, yeah. You've got to be, it's the, it's the place where the rich and famous hang out. Um, 
you can cut through that rich and famous noise by using Twitter in a bit of a, a, a different sort of context. And if the way that the context of Twitter, um, too many people use it as a billboard. People just think that if, hey, if I post my YouTube links on here, that'll get traction. Yeah. Never will that get traction. The, the way to contextualize Twitter if you're not already rich and famous is to use it as a text version of like a vlog or a blog. I, if you accidentally knocked your coffee over, you could tweet, for instance, shit had knocked my coffee yeah. over this month, or yeah. the third time this month. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> salmon over there. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go have a salad. Oh, sorry. All good, all good. Thank you. Yeah, so little tweets like that with 100% relatable life moments. Yeah. Gain traction even if you're not rich and famous on Twitter. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so that that is just keep in mind and oh and then we said TikTok as well. TikTok Yeah, I haven't looked into that at all yet. TikTok is uh, like uh, 10 second to 60 second videos, music based videos. So it's brilliant for you guys because you're allowed to use the top 40 music. They have uh, all of it. True. They have all of it on there already. So you can you guys can dance to any song you want yeah, essentially on there. And it's probably, it's got all the indicators that it's probably going to be the next Instagram um, in four or five years time. Um, so for you guys, especially with the, given that it's a, a dance sort of creative industry, I think TikTok's a massive thing if you guys should be like treating that as heavily as you treat Instagram. So, but the exact same content. This is one where the context right now is the same. It's just a different audience in there, younger audience, but the same style, same style. A a any story you put on Instagram, just to put it as a post on TikTok. So you can uh, automatically share to it? Uh, you can, yeah, or I don't think you can. I'll link to you it. You can something. link from TikTok to Instagram. I don't think you can link from Instagram uh -huh. to TikTok. Um, but anyway, it's, it's just manual post it, double it up. It's yeah. well, 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 well worth it. And the, the organic views on there are really, I haven't yet got a feel for what creates it to, to, to kind of pop, but yeah. I've had, um, like on one of my posts, just a random post, I got, I had 40,000 40, views on the video, and I'm like, oh. whoa. And I, and I had like, I had like 15 followers at the time, and I'm like, what on earth happened with this video? There's no boosts or anything on that, that's just, mm. and then, but I'm averaging like, 200 views and then one of them just banged 40,000 and this, hmm. yeah so anyway play around with TikTok but so that's the context of things and then what so once you, you're you're firm on context you'll put you'll start putting the right stuff on and now how you get the right stuff then without killing yourself because if you go and try to create original content for all these different things, yeah. it's going to be hard, hard, hard. Yeah. And you're not going to keep up with it. Like just the editing alone yep. for that much, totally. it's not going to happen. So that's where you get back to that long form content. And when you create a YouTube video, um, there's, I would say put a three to four minute video on Facebook that is like the highlights of that video. So just trim that same long form down to, to those three to four minute highlights. Instagram, I suggest doing a same length, three to four minutes, but using Instagram TV. Have you looked at Instagram TV? I've seen videos, I haven't, I don't know how to use it. So yet. Instagram TV is just a, the full vertical um, aspect ratio. Uh -huh. And allows you to have unlimited time, well it's like 45 minutes maximum you can have, but people aren't watching for 45 minutes, people are watching for three to four minutes. Yeah. Um, so that gets past the initial 60 second thing. Have a look at my posts. You'll see that you when you, when you put on Instagram TV, it shares a preview to your Instagram story. Uh, sorry, timeline. Yeah. And, and they have to click watch. And, ha and they have, you have to click continue to watch yeah. Instagram TV, but the preview is only a one to one, it's a square, where when they click watch, it goes uh, to yeah, full. It goes full so you yeah, need to have true. your preview built so that it fits neatly in a one to one ratio. Anyway, um, so you, uh, Instagram. Does everyone have access to Instagram TV or is that you need to everyone, have like... No, everyone. Everyone's got access to it. I'll try to find it though, don't it's, it's tricky to find. It's top right, pulling a little button up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. But um, Twitter is a two minute 30 thing. Like I said, the context of Twitter is daily updates of, of regular life, um, but also chuck a two minute 30 highlight video on, on Twitter. Well, it doesn't have to be two minutes, 30, but maximum two minutes and 30 seconds. In um, content, right? With Insta? Yeah, and so I would, 
I would have it as slightly different to Insta because the as the aspect ratio here is different, so you're uh, gonna need to edit it to sixteen um, by nine. Yeah, sixteen by nine. Um, TikTok uses the, the full vertical, so same as your Instagram, yeah. which is good. But the thing is, in order to achieve that, there is you need some you need you need a bunch of you willing to do some post production editing of any long form content that you do. So if you guys if you guys, let's say you're putting on a, um, a skit or a, you're doing a dance like we did down in Byron or something like that, all of the footage from that, including the B-roll and all that sort of stuff, is what is going to filter down to all these different things. Yeah. And if you can keep it, like, like the moment, I've just got to the point where I've literally hired someone to do that post-production. So right awesome. now for me, all I'm doing is I do my long form edits. I flick the file to my dude over in the US, yeah. and he, in, within 24 hours, speaks back at me a Facebook, and Instagram, a Twitter, a TikTok That's cool. video. Yeah. And he's funny as hell, and he just gets the, he gets the little funny bits, and he adds little edits on top of it, and all that sort of stuff. That's super cool. And it just keeps it rolling. But like, I've only been at that point for literally three weeks. I've had him as yeah, employed right. for three weeks, and it's, I am loving it. It's. It's, it's made my day so much easier. Yeah, that. And the content is rolling out like crazy now, mm. which is really cool. But yeah, it allows you to focus on the on the creation rather than the production. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you are at a phase where you can't yet afford to hire someone, mm -hmm. and hiring someone's not easy. Hiring someone to do your post production, it needs to be someone who knows you. It needs to be someone who is in tune with your industry and reliable and reliable yeah. and capable and yeah. and i i think funny they need yeah. i think being I funny in your editing is is mm -hmm. it's the easiest way shareable content people share content for for different reasons either inspiration something something horrific um or something inspiring or something funny. generates some sort of emotion quickly yeah so humor is the easiest one to to, to nail i think um Sure. But yeah, I, I'm super happy that the, the first dude I've employed on this is is killing it. He's he's a legend. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah. But the question, the thing is, before you can afford that, I guess you got options. How many people you got working on this? So I'm essentially managing everything. But we've got our four main cast. Mm -hmm. So the way we've done it at the moment is, between the four of us, we, we cycle each day. So each day one of us does one Insta post. Yep. On the fifth day, it's open to either someone from the community or one of our students or something. So we have a pool of people who can pull on for that fifth day. Mm -hmm. So each of us from the original cast is only doing one video every five days. Yep. And we're managing to get daily content. A lot of the time, two pieces of content a day. Um, I posted a thing the other day saying if you're a robot from anywhere around the world, send us footage and I'll feature it. Mm. So we've already got like three people. Yeah, yeah. Our, our channel is nothing within the first week. Already we've got three people saying post our stuff. Yeah, we're good. So um, I've got another one which I've got to post today, which will be today's second content. I've posted two a day now for the last three or four days. Mm. It's just content is abundant. But there's four main cast and I manage the whole thing at the moment. So they've all got access, so I don't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. They film themselves, they upload themselves, they tag themselves. Um, so I'm trying to streamline the process so that each of us can focus on our daily lives and not get burnt out by the process at this stage until yeah. it grows a bit. Um, you know, you mentioned getting burnt out. Yeah. I think that one of the one of the easiest ways to avoid that problem is to give yourself permission, particularly in your long form content, to be not always on show. And what I mean by that is, is allow yourself to talk real. Candid. Yeah, you're not the robot, you're Sharu. Yeah. And and actually tell people what you're trying to do. Literally tell them, hey man, look, we, we don't know if we can actually do this, we're gonna try, we'll be as patient as possible, we're gonna fumble through and make a heap of mistakes. Mm -hmm. But look, we're gonna bring you guys along for the ride and, and hopefully we can work out our, 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 our path and get there in the end. And so when people see that candidness and see that authenticity, they are willing to forgive shitty, yeah. co shitty content. Yep, totally. Because let's, let's be real, we all start with shitty content. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
And even though you guys have a hell of a lot of talent, you're still in the shitty content level of production and distribution. Yeah. So, for sure. so if you can communicate that with with people on in your long form content, and I do that, I, I have a habit of doing that once a month. Some people do it in every video. Some people do it, but I call it the plug. Once a month, I just get on there and be be real. There's nothing about arm wrestling. It's just well, it's still about arm wrestling. But I just talk to people, give people an update where the business is at where it's going, I, I say thank you a lot. Yeah, they're good, I watch those. Yeah. Like really, really getting, allowing people to understand what's actually going on. Yeah, it humanizes you a little bit. Yeah, I, I think if you can sh show that genuine gratitude, people will resonate with you a hell of a lot more. I agree. And ultimately, they actually become your advocates because mm -hmm. they're like, I like what this dude's trying to do, yeah. I'm gonna help. Mm -hmm. All right, so there you have it guys. A little bit of an extra insight into the way that the social media brand of Pound for Pound Arm Wrestling has been built. Um, I, I hope you got something out of it. And like I said at the beginning, this wasn't a video. This isn't like a new direction in content. This is just me kind of wanting to be open and honest with you guys. It's always been something that I've really valued a lot, just staying open and honest with you guys um, because I think it allows you to really understand what I'm trying to do. And at the end of the day, I don't really know how I'm gonna to get to the end state. I've got some pretty crazy dreams with this this channel and for the sport, uh, and I don't exactly know how I'm gonna get there. But what I do know is that I love the process, I love the journey, and I'm gonna kinda of bring you guys along for the ride the whole way through, and we're gonna fumble through it together. So um, I really am thankful and grateful for your patience, first and foremost, in all those times when I'm putting out content which is rubbish and letting me fumble through things and hopefully getting to a point where we have an amazing amount of content, which means ultimately an amazing amount of revenue, which means I can invest it back into the sport and uh, we can achieve that end state that I'm dreaming of. All right guys, hope you enjoyed that one, got something out of it. Leave us a comment below and- uh Yeah, that's a bit!